Hello, my name's Greg Bailey. I am a portrait photographer from Brighton, specializing in drag. I'm also an author and a podcaster. Follow me on Instagram at Greg Bailey Photo. You can also follow my podcast at The All Right Darling Podcast. For me, drag photography isn't really that different from standard portrait photography, working with models, working with whoever you choose to work with. When you're photographing them, light will be your biggest friend. I choose a bracketed flash gun to my camera because it's very straight down the lens. It's not kind of working against their makeup that they've done. They're contouring, so they're wanting to trick you into seeing like what they want you to see. So any sort of kind of natural light you need to be quite careful with because you don't want it casting shadows basically kind of counteracting what they've done. The other thing I would say always keep in mind is editing. You need to kind of be aware of certain things such as that wig lace line. Don't leave it in, just get rid of it for them. Sometimes it's impossible to cover it fully with makeup. Um, if there's a line with their breastplate that's showing, just get rid of it. It's, they will love you for it. Um, and also, if you're just not sure, just ask them. Just ask them what they want doing. In my camera bag is my camera, and I've just got a 5D Mark II Canon, and I like to keep it quite simple. Um, I always have. I've got a little, little flash gun. I bracket it, bracket it to my camera. Um, I like to keep it kind of nice and close to the lens. The reason I've always kept it really simple is because when I first started specializing in drag, it's because most of the time I'd have to go to a hotel where they're staying or have five minutes with them just before they go on stage. Then I started kind of going on location because you don't know how long you're gonna get with, with them. So I just have to kind of go out into the street or if there's a park nearby, it was only kind of, you know, a few years into it where I started getting more time with the people. I just started keeping it simple and I just have ever since. So yeah, today I'm just gonna have a play around use what I normally use, but also just have a play around with studio lights as well. But yeah, that's what's in my camera bag. I keep it simple. I chose to make a career out of drag photography, mainly because I tried kind of going down the typical route of doing um, kind of like model shoots, fashion shoots, and it just really wasn't for me. Um, I didn't get any joy out of it. Like the, the people, some of the people were lovely, but I also kind of felt quite lost as well. I didn't really know who I was at the time. And it just sort of, I just sort of fell into it. I um, started watching a, a little, little TV show called RuPaul's Drag Race. And I just reached out to someone on there called Raja, who won season three. I just got talking, she liked my work and I was just talking with her for quite some time, back and forth on Facebook. And eventually when the Queen started coming over to the UK, I started photographing them. Um, because at that time, it wasn't very popular. Um, it was very niche. Um, it was, you know, it's now become a very cult, huge thing, but at the time, no one really wanted to do it, but I did. And I just never felt so welcome. I was getting to photograph these amazing looks, but I wasn't having the pressure of being a fashion photographer. And I was just getting to meet these amazing camp people. I was hooked. I'm new to this little thing here, so I'm just having a play around to see what, what it's all about. Um, but I've got a lovely big, big light above here and two lights here that I'm just gonna, gonna play around with. I'm then gonna interchange with what I normally do and that's a nice bracketed light, like I was saying earlier. Um, I'm gonna get my classic sort of style I do. So right now I'm literally just gonna have a play around and see what, what we get. As you can see, we've got a bit of natural light now. Um, that's basically just to get a bit of air in, but the flash is gonna kind of knock that out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> the same sort of applies for what I was doing with Olympia. So I'm just getting quite low, so the lens is kind of focusing the diaphragm area, so you're getting more of the outfit, and it's not just focused on the top half. 
and I'm just gonna snap away. And look into the camera for me and do a few more sort of, yeah, yeah, you know, you know. Gorgeous, beautiful, and Just again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just hate these. I just hate it. I just hate the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like you going up to her hand. I was like, just have fun. Just do what you do. Um, because ultimately, that's what they're coming to you for. Is they like your work, but just kind of make sure they're happy. Ask them questions. Um, yeah. So I'm here with Tom Board, who is the designer for today. Greg got in touch um, because he's uh, he's seen my designs before. He wanted something bold and interesting. And then we uh, we got talking, and then we started a group chat with the Nova Olympia. I had some ideas in my head about the designs that we were going to do because they were in my head. They were kind of doing all this, and they were warping, and they weren't they weren't proper yet. Greg uh, sat there with a uh, pencil and paper and drew out what I was relaying mm -hmm. um, and they turned out to be some gorgeous sketches didn't they? Did indeed. I typically try and do a bit of kind of sketch work before any photo shoot anyway just to kind of kind of get it into my head what I'm wanting. It turns out it's, it really helped with creating the looks. Oh it well. definitely helped me because I had them on my little pin board as I was sewing so I was looking at them and I was able to just write down each step of what I would needed to do so you know corset, uh, chiffon bases, um, tubes, wires, boning. In terms of colour, we had some conversations, didn't we? We kind yeah. of knew from the start that Olympia was going to have a purple vibe. I didn't look too much about the, the hues of mm -hmm. any fabric. I just thought, you know, let's do dark purples for the base and the extra bits. And we'll have the base as kind of under parts as like a lilac, a nice, a nice different lighter colour. And we kind of applied that to the other look as well. So Probably one of the first times ever no drag queens had anything to negative to say or were not demanding at all. They literally just rolled with it. And that speaks to their character as well. They've been yeah. extremely helpful and really, really positive to work with. And I think they're, re they're really going to enjoy the look. We also wanted to, to work with tool. So obviously I love tool and ruffles and organza and all of that kind of good structural stuff. Let's get the same vibe with the tool, but make the tool structures into different things. So Olympia's had lots of long, ruffled strips and then uh, Nova's is more like balls, like little little pixie balls that kind of move around and the headpiece does that. It's very cute. A lot of the time I just work just with the drag queen and then she sends what she wants or if she wants me to do something original she'll say do me something original for this event and I'll kind of cater that. So it's been really nice to be from the start. We've got photographer, drag queens and a designer all working together to make this happen. Because so many times I'll make an outfit and it will get performed in, but I obviously cannot be at every performance where that outfit no. is to experience it. Yeah, it's been lovely to have it all come towards today to get it all finished. I like it to look like no retouching's been done, but they're just at their best. The perfect compliment for me, which I have had, I've seen comments once it's been posted online saying it's great to see photography with no retouching. It's a huge compliment, but I just want to say there's so much retouching. I did some retouching on a picture of Carmen Electra a, quite a while ago now, and that was the comment I got, and I just thought, oh, yes. You want it to look like them. You just want it to look like them at their best. Always just ask, but nip them in a little bit more. Um, sometimes you'll have a bit of a spillover from the corset. Get rid of that. They don't want it there. It's the same with kind of like, you know, the hairline on, on the lace. Like, they, they clearly don't want that. So get rid of it. I've done a photo shoot this year where um, I was outside. It was pitch black and I was just using the bracketed flash. So I couldn't really see what I was photographing. So I was directing as best I could. And it wasn't until the end of the shoot that she had two missing nails and one of her lashes was in her hair. There was quite a lot of editing I needed to do. Like she had um, a visible breastplate line, so I got rid of that. I filled in kind of like missing nails. Like obviously that's an extreme kind of thing. You don't normally get that, but you do what you've got to do to make your client look their best. Because ultimately they intended those nails to be on their hand. They intended that, those lashes to be on their eyes. So just put them back on. In regards to kind of lighting, I like to kind of have quite a cool, kind of feel to my images. 
they kind of have a bit of a blueness to them or a slight green kind of feel to them just to kind of knock out any of that warmth. Most people use Lightroom or anything. Um, I've never done that. I like to treat each image as its own thing. I don't like to think of them as batches. I like to kind of think of them as their own piece of fine art, basically, because that's what they are. They're my kind of go-to bits, is kind of just making sure it's a nice, cool lighting, um, making sure that the imperfections are perfect. Unless there's any other kind of requests from the client themselves, that's what I do. Everybody wants to party. That pressure of kind of, I can't fail. We all fail um, and you learn from your failures um, and it's something I'm still learning now. Just relax, just calm down, you're just having fun. You may get one amazing picture or you might get a hundred. Either or, it doesn't really matter. You're just having fun, we're just taking pretty pictures. It's all good, like we're just playing dress up. I built a career basically by being nice, getting to know people, having fun, obviously being good at what I do and finding my niche. But the most important thing is literally being memorable. You don't have to be mean and kind of, you know, better than everyone else to make an impression. You've just got to be approachable and kind and people will come back to you. Um, and you've got to listen to what people say, really. Um, you've still got to stand your own ground and kind of, you know, put your own stamp on it. But I would always suggest listening to your client, your model, whoever it is you're working with, um, because we all have a comfort zone and you don't want to push people too much. Networking plays a huge role within what I do and what any photographer, any creative does. The best mindset to be in is not necessarily think of it as networking, but think of it as just getting to know people because that is literally all it is. Like, of course, you're going to be kind of, you know, finding out what they do, where they work and trying to kind of get in there, especially if you have the opportunity to be at the shoot before um, you need to start shooting, you know, kind of getting ready with them if, you know, if they allow that. And just having fun, just kind of, you know, getting to know who they are um, and just being silly. I would always say try and meet your model or your client before the shoot is even happening. If you can't do that, give yourself enough time to be there in advance and just kind of get to know them like an hour or so before the shoot. Go to events, go to conventions, talk to people that are kind of, you know, connected to, you know, your, your friends on Instagram. Any clients you've worked with, if they've kind of collaborated with someone, reach out to them. Just don't be scared to chat, basically. On odd occasions, you'll have someone come to you and you won't necessarily feel comfortable doing something they want you to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. You've just got to weigh it out if you're the right person for the job. Don't always try and bend what you do to others um, because typically they're coming to you for what they love about you, but sometimes they just want something done and that's absolutely fine to say no. Um, it's absolutely fine to suggest someone else who you think will be better suited. But if you accept that brief, I would say try and marry what they want with who you are. Um, so you, you can use it in your own portfolio, but just keep remembering that they've chosen you. It's always about listening to your client, listening to the model, listening to everyone involved, so everyone's on the same page. Um, that way you can't really go wrong. One thing I would advise when you are shooting drag, drag performers, drag artists, it's just talking to everyone involved. But like if you're gonna be collaborating with a designer, get them involved from the very start, get a WhatsApp group, get an Instagram group, just make sure everyone's on the same page. On the day, stay relaxed, keep calm, have fun. If we're talking about kind of technical side of things, when I've worked with drag racers before, when I've been documenting their looks from the show, I know I've got to have at least three different types of image, and that is uh, mid-length, full-length, and beauty. When I'm shooting the full-length, is to get quite low to the ground, and I'm basically pointing my lens towards their diaphragm. This gives a nice kind of amount of space at the bottom of the image, below their feet, more of a space above the head. This just kind of frames them very nicely. You get a full picture of what's going on, whether you're on location or whether you're in studio. It's just perfectly framed. You're seeing the full outfit. The focus isn't here, it's here. It also allows enough negative space for 
say, a main, big mainstream magazine to <laughs> allow me to have their, their branding up there. So if you ever want me. Same would apply for a mid shot. It gives you nice space around to frame the model and to focus on kind of any detail here. And then with the beauty shot, I like to get in very close, whether I zoom in close or if I just step forward. And you just have a nice tight crop so you can see the work they've been putting into their makeup. And again, make sure they're well lit because you don't want harsh shadows across here when they're actually kind of painting their eyebrows up here. That's just gonna ruin the illusion. Really ultimately just have fun with it and make sure they're well lit. So we're all finished for the day. Um, it's gone really well. Um, we've done lots of different setups, had lots of fun. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to Attitude Magazine and Wex for this. Um, finally brought me together with my girls. Oh, oh it was gorgeous. Loved every second. Really. Oh, it's fabulous. Um, if you want to follow me, you can find me at Greg Bailey Photo on Instagram. Um, you can also listen to me on my podcast, which is the All Right Darling podcast. And I suppose if you want to see more of any of these, well, where can people find you, Tom? Uh, they can find me on Instagram and TikTok at bald underscore eagle underscore Brighton. Ooh. And what about you two? Oh, well, listen, Nova, where can they find us? YouTube.com forward slash Novimpia. All of our socials will be on our YouTube channel, N-O-V-Y-N-P-I-A. You got it.